Hello everybody, this is Inayat Meer and today I am going to discuss on one of my videos about uh, network access protection. Uh, I have that video already posted on YouTube. So, uh, so far as of today I have seen that, uh, let us see that video. So, I have about uh, 23,000 viewers. Let us go to YouTube because uh, a lot of people and a lot of requests which are coming that I need to explain little bit more. So, let us go into the video which should be uh, this is 1 hour and 9 minutes. This is a long video and I would suggest that you guys supposed to go and look at that video. Okay, So, let me skip this advertisement. So, th this going to be the video but you are looking at it. So, you always can go and find under my name there. But uh, the issue is that uh, there there is enough explanation but uh, on the right side of my video here uh, my screen you see what is a NAP or uh, network access protection and then also I need to explain a few more details uh, just about a discussion about the uh, t like a few talks as a conversation and I do also have uh, prepared uh, three slides like I will show you the graphics of network access protection. So, you would be able to see some graphs and graphical overview on that one, but let us talk what is a NAP. So, network access protection uh, what was basically uh, IAS in 2003. So, that is the discussion topic. So, we are talking or discussing about that one. So, while I am playing that video on screen, I will pull out my PowerPoint slides and I will show you a few architectures and the way I actually I prepared those slides to show you. But on top of this video which you are going to go and watch and also along that you will see uh, about a 46 pages document which I am posting actually I have posted into a different site or different link. So, or you directly can email me uh, so I can provide it to you. So, my, my email is my full name 02 at yahoo.com yahoo.com and my name is right over there e n a y a t m e e r so i can provide you also the steps which i have performed on this lab and i also wrote down the document so uh, in a microsoft uh, network access protection uh, basically what is it it is a, a policy based management uh, an app is a policy policy ba based management feature of a windows uh, server 2008 or 2012 that allows a network administrator to control access to network resources so an endpoint device without a malware protection uh, the latest operating system patches a properly configured firewall and other well uh, proven security measures can pose a significant risk uh, to a corporate network in a production uh, network so where you have uh, a lot of devices actually up and running. So, NAP policies ensure that these and other features are in place and current before the endpoint device is allowed access to the network because every traffic comes through uh, those endpoint devices which we eventually or actually uh, supposed to protect. So, devices that are not in compliance may have their access restricted or blocked entirely. So, basically NAP is a built around a network policy server or NPS which replaces the older IAS if you remember if you go back about 10 to 15 years and uh, you remember or if you remember internet authentication service IAS uh, in windows server 2003 time. So, NPS is a radius compatible server designed to uh, provide authentication and authorization for remote clients. Remote clients like they are not in the LAN, but they log in from a different remote locations and is uh, uh, it acts as the health evaluation server uh, for network access protection. So, NPS stores the administrators NAP policies which you have seen or you will see in this long over an hour video. So, I have configured all one by one. I, I would suggest that you gonna have a 
full screen uh, on this and, and watch that one but this is just a discussion based on uh, everyone's emails and comments actually so mps stores administrators nap policies which are also referred as a health policies the actual evaluations uh, or the actual evaluation of the rules in a policy is performed by an enforcement point which is compatible uh, radius client that's capable of communicating with nps so uh, keep in mind that it the sound is like a client but the radius client actually uh, is a server so we actually set up a server as a radius client so nps supports uh, three different policies as i discussed in this actually video and i showed and i have performed it too uh, which is the first one is a connection request determines the general rule for requests from radius client such as whether specific requests are handled by the nps or proxied to another radius server the second one is a network policies define how connection attempts are either authorized or rejected the third one is health policies i will show you all in the graph actually but i just want to discuss while uh, on the back and you see my policy my uh, this uh, video is being played health policies is a third one define health rules that must be met in order to connect so then let me show you or, or explain to you actually but i will show you my slides actually but here i i just uh, gonna let you know that uh, we we'll discuss that how nap works or how nap works so this is the scenario or this is the way it works during login a nap client reports a system health status to a nap enforcement device such as a switch or vpn server or virtual private network server dhcp server or other services uh, in fact i have this graph here and which actually will tell you here you will see that in the architecture you have a dhcp server you have a health registration authority you have an active directory vpn server internet and this is your screen subnet or dmz and these are the remediation servers because if a client do not if a client actually is not capable of uh, uh, getting into the network or do not comply uh, rules uh, health uh, rules for example if you put a condition that uh, this laptop uh, someone logs in from home uh, is not compatible or uh, is, is not compliance for example not running an entire virus it should not go to the network so in other words it actually uh, being redirected to a remediation servers where actually it has all necessary uh, requirements to fulfill then actually it becomes a compliance so that is the one uh, idea about it so that's why i was talking about it uh, the uh, when uh, basically uh a nap client reports a system status to a nap enforcement device uh the nap enforcement device reports the endpoint health to a network policy server under the windows server 2008 or 2012 r2 so nps evaluates the status against requirements established by the system administrator so basically this architecture uh, explains a little bit in that one okay if the nap client logging in meets the nps requirements it will be allowed to log into the corporate network normally if the nap client trying to log into the corporate network doesn't comply with the nps requirements the client can be blocked or placed on a network with restricted access until its health can be corrected by the user or through a remediation server containing the required patches signatures or other content so once the client's health is updated and compliant a new request for a health check can be made so we are talking about this remediation server so you can figure this actually from the uh policy console nap policy console so this is your restricted network where you have all those clients who are not compliant and then uh, health registration authority basically when you add roles and features you can add all those roles and features and uh, then you have a server nap policy server which is running the uh, console 
and then uh, this is your uh, parameter network or demilitarized zone or screen subnet where you have a DHCP server, you have an active directory and you have a virtual private network server or we can combine actually multiple features to uh, a reduced number of servers and uh, but this is a little bit detailed uh, uh, architecture which I wanted to show you and here this is the way that you have a process in source in enforcement process. So, here you can see different graph but your client NAP client it communicates with a remediation server and then this is a HRA health registration authority these are the radius messages health requirement servers or SHR or system health requirement uh, cure is basically goes from here NAP, NAP health policy server, VPN server or IEEE 802.1x compliant devices and the DHCP server. So, these are basically a uh, different uh, uh, look or different way uh, architectural architectural way basically and this is the uh, scenario kind of uh, situation you have a laptop you took it out from somewhere uh, remotely you are somewhere else like a roaming laptop which you use at home at uh, whenever you go travel or something or you can be a visitor also okay and uh, you can basically have an at home and managed home computer so here uh, really a situation comes in where you need to have some uh, compliance requirements so you have to comply so if i do not install antivirus uh, I do not actually comply with the network ok. So, these are the desktop computers. So, these are the couple of scenarios which I mentioned here on the back end. So, let me see if I uh, expand it a bit more this video is a small video here. So, basically this is a kind of full screen video I am playing right now. So, this is a complete video I would suggest that uh, look at this video I have a couple of more videos as well uh, about NPS. So, uh, I would say that uh, get benefit of these uh, these videos plus the the document which actually have a big document. Uh, let me uh, take a peek on that document and I can show you the document as well on screen. But you can request for that. So this is the document about NPS knowledge transfer or KT document, and this document is a complete document that includes the basic and advanced expert level steps. So here I started like right from beginning how to install and then after that how to register in active directory once you install it's done and i put all steps here and then how to configure it i made my last name dot com domain it is a virtual domain uh, where actually i have configured this all and actually i have done this project for microsoft so through that one i actually decided to uh, take a uh, basically a documented approach. So, I took this one and you will see a lot of work was done in this one every single step was given to you here and all screenshots are here and I think that you will not feel sorry about looking at this document and I will go fast because a long document and there are just some uh, overviews where you can see that and I think that a person who has no knowledge about NPS will also get benefits. So, uh, this is a very nice and better way. Uh, I did some XML configuration as a load balancing uh, because I implemented this project with a load balance to servers so they can distribute their burden. This is an active directory. Anyway, so the, yeah, so this is the all documentations we you have here. And if you still do not find it, let me know that one. But I gave you the link under my video, so you should get that document there and uh, uh, get benefit out of this document and I would suggest everyone to look at this uh, project and if you have your own project to do this one. So, I hope you would like this video and if you like it please subscribe me and uh, I will talk to you later on in my other video and thank you this is again Anayat Meer bye.